Now it's time to get into some advanced features of S3 and how you can use Boto3 to take advantage of them. First, let's talk about Access Control Lists, or ACLs. These are a way of controlling permissions on S3, so if you need to manage rules for individual objects, you can use an object ACL. When you upload something to S3, the default configuration is to set the object as private. If you want to make the object publicly accessible, you can set the ACL at creation time. Let's create a second file and see what this looks like. So, for my terminal, I'm going to open up Python, import Bodo3, and also going to import this create temp file. So from Bodo3 guide, import create temp file. Cool. And going to grab this first bucket name again. So first bucket name and set that equal to the first bucket name. All right. Second file name is going to equal create temp file and make this one 400 bytes. Let's call it second file.txt and go ahead and fill it with S's. All right, if that worked, you should be able to open it up and yep, there's a bunch of S's in this new second file here. And if you want to see what that name is, you can just say what second file name and there it is. So before I get too far, I'm going to copy that, paste it. So now create another resource interface by saying Bodo3 resource S3. And go ahead and make a second object, which is just going to be the S3 resource object and put this in the first bucket and give it the second file name. Okay, so at this point you have your second object instance, but like before, nothing has been uploaded to S3 yet. So go ahead and call upload file, and in here you're going to pass the second file name, but then this time you're also going to pass in these extra args. And this extra argument is going to be ACL in all caps and set this equal to public read. Just like that, close out the dictionary and close out the function. Run this, no errors. So if you want to see what that object ACL is, you can go ahead and make something called second object ACL and set this equal to your second object and call the ACL method off of that. So from here, if you wanted to see who has access based on that ACL, you can say second ACL or second object ACL and get this grants property off of it. And we can take a look here and you can see that you have a list of these grantees. So this first grantee is myself um, with my ID and everything. And you can see that my permission is full control, which makes sense because I made the object. Now this second grantee over here isn't a specific user, but a group. And this group represents global all users. And if you keep following, the permission here is read which matches this ACL from up here, where when you uploaded this file, you set it equal to public read. Now let's say for a second that you didn't want to do that, and maybe you want to make this object private. Now, one way you could do this is by deleting the object and then re-uploading it, but fortunately, you don't have to do that. So just uh, let's make a new response here, and what you're gonna do is take that second object ACL, and you're going to call put off of that. And inside here, just say ACL and set this equal to private. Let's run that. No errors. 
see what response looks like. And this looks just like the response that you got when you deleted an object. And here you can see your HTTP response is a 200 code, which means it was successful. So let's uh, actually prove that by taking a look at the second object ACL grants property again. And we're not looking at the second object dot ACL. We are looking at second object underscore ACL. So that would help if that's typed in correctly. And here you go. Taking a look at this again, you can see that now the only grantee that's on here is myself. All right. So now you should have a pretty good idea of how you can use ACLs when you're creating and working with objects to control who has access to look at them. If you think you're going to have multiple categories of data uploaded to S3, you can look into tags. Tags aren't only a great way to separate out data, but you can actually grant access to objects based on their tags. Okay, in the next video, you're going to learn how to use encryption to add an extra layer of security to your data.